Hello friends, let's understand different types of financial risk in business. How do we assess this risk and how do we manage this risk? One of the important things about financial risk is that they all arise from the financial decisions. And they have a direct financial impact on things like profitability of business, the cash flows, the survival of the business and the valuation of business and they are visible on the face of the financial statements. So if you can analyze the key financial statements very well, you should be able to relatively easy find out the financial risk involved in business. I have classified the financial risk into five main categories. One, structural risk. Two, credit risk. Third, liquidity risk. Fourth, investment risk. And fifth, solvency risk. Let's understand each of these in detail. First, structural risk. Structural risk arise out of the financing decisions or the alternatives that are decided by the board of directors and the chief financial officer and CEO. For example, how much should be the debt component versus how much should be the equity component? What are the sources of debt? For example, are you going for a bank loan or you are going to issue bonds? At what rate of interest? Equity, for example, are you going to issue preference shares? Are you going to, for example, issue ordinary equity shares? Are you going to issue any other kind of shares? For example, differential voting rights shares. And these structures depend on also the nature of business. For example, typically in the infrastructure business like road building, airport construction, the hydropower construction, it is accepted that there will be a certain large amount of debt. So that higher leverage is acceptable in those cases, primarily because these projects require large amount of funds and there are real assets available to give to the banks or any other lender as a security. Compared to this, for example, IT services companies do not require that much of working capital or you know, long term capital or assets and therefore they have very low level of debt. How do you identify the structural risk in business? Fundamentally by using certain ratios like debt to equity ratio for example or debt to assets ratio. In case of banks, the capital adequacy norms have been well defined under Basel III regulations which are adopted by RBI in India. You know how much of tier 1 capital to have, how much of tier 2 capital to have and how much of total equity the banks must have as a percentage of the risk weighted assets. So these structural risks are basically arising out of strategic decisions which have a long term impact on the viability of the organization. So it is difficult to change the structure. Once you decide, you know, this is the debt equity component, it's very difficult to change that. For example, if you are over leveraged, you have too much of debt, you know, getting rid of that debt is not that easy. Or if you are over capitalized, you have, you have too much of equity, then you know, obviously you can buy back equity, etc. But that is not a decision which can be reversed very easily. And therefore, at times, companies undertake something called the capital restructuring exercise to reduce the level of risk involved by of a cult structure. And typically, this is where the investment bankers get involved. The second important financial risk is credit risk. It is also called as a default risk because it arises out of the default of the counterparty in either repaying your interest or in repayment of the amount that you have lent to them. So this is about non-payment or delayed payment of interest and or principal. For example, banks take this risk in fund-based business or even in non-fund-based business. For example, when bank gives a guarantee for the customer and that guarantee is invoked by the third party, upon non-compliance with the terms of the contract, the bank is undertaking a credit risk. Investment bankers, for example, all the time undertake the counterparty risk. Broker or dealers undertake that risk if they are dealing in the OTC market and there is a counterparty which defaults. The corporates undertake that risk when they are giving the credit or they have the debtors or the receivables. The mutual funds, for example, they are investing in, let's say, corporate bonds, they undertake the credit risk. So there are different, different parties in the financial market or in the business world which take a credit risk at times. The sources of credit risk can be external to the particular entity. For example, it can be coming from the industry. It can be coming from, let's say, economy or other external forces, or they can be internal again, you know, because of the internal dynamics of the company. How do we mitigate the credit risk? Typically, you can do a proper assessment before taking the credit exposure. So banks have their own way of you know, assessing the borrower. Uh, even the corporate should assess you know, whether they are giving credit to, for example, their wholesalers or to anybody else or their customers. You should have a proper kind of framework in place depending on you know, the amount of risk you are undertaking. You should look at whether you can get some kind of a collateral or a security. And you can also use some of the derivative contracts, for example, like credit default swaps or total return swaps 
or you can securitize your assets away for example like using mortgage backed securities or asset backed securities you know those kind of options are available for you to reduce the credit risk in business the third important financial risk is liquidity risk which basically is about the immediate survival of the company do you have sufficient funds to pay off your debts or other obligations that are coming up for payment within next few days let's say one month or two months so it is about how quickly you can convert your assets into cash to pay off the obligations for example there will be couple of factors involved in assessing you know how much is your liquidity if you have assets that take a lot of cost to liquidate for example brokerage charges are high or the duties are very high then that's not a liquid asset for example if you talk of real estate the brokerage could be let's say 1 to 2% the cost of transaction for example in maharashtra you have to pay 8% stamp duty on on real estate sale so the costs are fairly high so it's not a highly liquid asset second thing you have to look at what is the impact of sale for example if you try to unload let's say a large block of equity in a company which is medium size then the prices might crash so you know how much of volume you can transact without any kind of a price impact and therefore at times you know these kind of deals are done through block deals or through investment bankers rather than you know selling them in the market third important factor of liquidity is time it takes right so for example again going back to real estate it takes large amount of time or longer time to liquidate a real estate as compared to let's say if you are holding a nifty stock which is a very liquid stock you know you can sell off on any trading day cash is obviously the most liquid asset and is it has the least amount of liquidity risk then we have others like you know typically in money market mutual funds there are kind of assets that you can liquidate very easily then you can liquidate treasury bills very easily so they have you know no liquidity risk again the way you can assess the liquidity risk in let's say typical manufacturing business are by looking at ratios like current ratio peak ratio cash ratio current ratio is the, about you know current assets by current liabilities quick ratio is again similar but you reduce the inventories from the current assets and in cash ratio we look at you know cash assets upon uh, the uh, current liabilities which is basically cash assets are like cash at bank uh, cash in hand at for example short term uh, securities then working capital requirements we have to understand one thing are very very industry specific so certain industries might require large working capital certain industries may not require large working capital in case of banks for example liquidity coverage ratio under basel 3 is taken as a measure of the liquidity risk of the bank so banks have to maintain 30 days of their liquidity requirements in high quality liquid assets in order to satisfy the basel 3 requirements so you can undertake measures like you know maintaining some funds in the short term liquid assets like in the money market mutual funds in treasury bills or in cash or with fds with the bank which you can break or maybe you can issue commercial papers to manage your short term liquidity or you can you know, fire sell some of the assets right so that is one of the some of the ways of managing the liquidity risk fourth risk in financial risk is basically investment risk so these investment decisions i am talking about are basically strategic investments and therefore the liquidity is low you are not able to exit them easily and the returns are also low or uncertain for example the automobile majors typically you know have encouraged formation of ancillary industries for manufacturing various components a typical automobile might need thousands of components so that they encourage people to set up the units around their facilities which you know will manufacture certain components which will be assembled by the uh, automobile company same way it goes for the airplane manufacturing as well so the investments that they make to encourage people to set up those you know uh, ancillary industries are obviously less liquid and there is a lot of investment risk in that when you set up a foreign subsidiary for example you have to invest in that subsidiary and you know you may not be able to get your funds back very easily you when we invest in let's say software export zone uh, properties for example right in building those assets for example you may not be able to liquidate it very easily because once the scz 10 year period already period is over you know another company will not be able to will not be willing to buy it at a good price so essentially investments of this kind you should finance out of long term funds or highly you know mainly out of equity only how do you mitigate the risk in the investments is i think the board has to have oversight over this the decisions have to be taken in the long term strategic interest of the company and also you have to consider strategic divestment of those investments and it is prudent to write off some of these you know if the subsidiary is not profitable you know for example uh, in those cases right so so you can uh, reduce the risk on the balance sheet at least the fifth important financial risk is basically solvency risk so i spoke about liquidity some time back 
solvency is basically about long term survival right so as we know insolvency is about somebody not being able to pay off the debtors right solvency comes out of mainly two three factors because of the capital structure i spoke about it earlier now what is debt what is equity how they are being sourced etc and how are your operating cash flows as compared to the financing and investing cash flows a company that has consistent positive uh, inflows from their operations will survive well in the long term also companies that have low break even point you know the by generating only a higher lesser amount of sale they can break even or recover all their costs they are having a good solvency or their solvency risk is low in banks under basel 3 nsfr or net stable funding ratio is taken as one of the ratios to identify the solvency risk in a bank how do we mitigate the solvency risk obviously you should be in a business where there is a low cash burn you are not burning too much of a cash unless you have access to deep pockets for example private equity or venture capital fund are funding some of the high cash burn startups in last few years as we have seen you should have good access to long term sources of funds at a reasonable cost and you should focus on generating consistent positive operating cash flows so i think uh, understanding this will give you some perspective on different different types of financial risk i am going to cover most of this risk in detail later in the subsequent videos this will help you identify you know what are the different different risk involved in business and you know, what kind of skills are required to manage this risk i hope you found this video useful if yes please do like this video share with your friends and also subscribe to my channel thank you very much cheers